everyone. Welcome back to The Coop with Meyer Hatchery, where we talk all things poultry in hopes of educating chicken keepers and inspiring future flock owners. I'm Tessa, and today we have a very special guest, Lisa Steele, the author of Duck Eggs Daily, the Fresh Eggs Daily blog, and host of her own show on public television, Welcome to My Farm. Lisa, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me today. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so happy you're here. Uh, this year, Meyer Hatchery released an amazing new opportunity for our customers, a book of the month club. For the month of March, our special selection is Duck Eggs Daily, and I can't wait to pick your brain about the flock that waddles. But first, I'd love to learn a little bit more about your poultry experience. So how did you get started? Yeah, that's a very good question. And just to, to preface this by saying, I'm really excited that you're focusing on ducks because for so many years, the chickens have shared the spotlight. Mm -hmm. So back in 2009, when we got chickens, I had raised them as a kid. Uh, I was in 4-H, my grandparents had chickens, that whole deal. But uh, back in 2009, it was, you know, everyone was uh, thinking about a recession maybe and getting into homesteading. And it was just, you know, kind of the thing to do. And um Long story short, I really wanted goats, but we ended up with chickens. But <laughs> the day we went to the feed store to get those six baby chicks, we also got two ducklings. And, you know, I had been raised around chickens. Um, as I said, my grandparents had chickens, you know, so I felt pretty comfortable, even though it was sort of a spur of the moment decision. But I had never raised ducks or knew anything about ducks, but we got them. And it sort of ended up in a crash course because the chickens, it was almost like muscle memory. Things came back to me and I was like, oh, I remember my grandmother doing this or I remember doing this chicken chores as a kid. I did do a lot of research. I, I think I read every you know magazine and book that was out there and a lot of the poultry science department sites at universities, things like that for the chickens, just to make sure that I knew what I was doing for sure. But the ducks were a whole new experience and I mean, we just fall in love with them. Um, looking back, and I probably shouldn't even say this, but looking back, if I could have chosen, I would have just gotten ducks. Huh. They, I mean, 14 years in now, I guess it is. Um, they're just so much easier. Hmm. They're they're always in better moods. Aww. You know, I, <laughs> I just find I can, them. No, no, I get that. I get that. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so so all these years, you know, so I wrote my first book about chickens and, and that whole thing in 2012. And then uh, for my next book, I really wanted to write a duck book. And, and um, you know, there isn't as much out there about ducks, which is really surprising because as we started raising them both together and realized the differences and the similarities, I couldn't understand why ducks were not more popular. And every year I keep thinking, this is going to be the year that backyard ducks really break out. And so far it hasn't really happened, but I think little by little, I do know that some people are starting with ducks. You know, chickens have been sort of the gateway livestock, yep. as, as everyone likes to say. Um, but I'm, I'm finding more and more people that aren't adding ducks to their chicken flock, but they're just starting out right with ducks, which I think is great. That is, and it, that's very interesting. Um, you know, I came across your book when we actually moved to the home that we're currently in because before uh, this, I was a city girl and we made a move to um, a homestead uh, with acreage and it came with its own little flock of chickens. And the homeowners that were here before, when they when they sold the house to us, those those birds came with it. And she gifted me a copy of your book. It was the first book that I read about uh, keeping poultry, and then it has been my my go-to guide for every aspect of poultry care. And when I saw that you had a book for ducks, it really inspired me to look and see, well, these must be possible. These must be easy enough that it should be a norm rather than just focusing on the chickens. and. Mm -hmm. um, since we're focusing on duck care and your book, Duck Eggs Daily, that's what I consider to be the best natural waterfowl book available. So when I would agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yes. well, well, 
what I found, because I did try to read all the books about ducks, and I couldn't find too many that were specifically about ducks. A lot of them were ducks and geese, which mm. now that we've added geese to our flock about three years ago or four years ago, geese and ducks are nothing alike. Geese are actually more like sheep or cows. Huh. So so to lump geese and, and ducks in a book makes no sense to me. But it was hard also to find books about pet ge- pet ducks and laying ducks. It was a lot of meat ducks. Mm you know, raising them for meat, butchering, things like that, not so much the pets. And I mean, honestly, they are just such great pets. And there's, there are so many advantages to ducks um, that I'm not sure people really realize. Right. Well, and raising them naturally is, is one of those kind of things where we see a lot of information right now, um, a lot of misinformation, a lot of treating without reason, uh, not going and doing more research about this. And really in Duck Eggs Daily, it gives us this overview of how you can live comfortably with your ducks and invite them into an environment that you share. And I really love that about it. So how did you get to start doing things more naturally? It, I mean, it, it started with the chickens, obviously, but we did have the ducks at the same time, but it, it just made sense to me because part of the reason for raising animals or growing gardens or providing your own food is so it's not only fresher and more local, but it's healthier. So it, it made zero sense to me to start raising animals and then just pumping them full of medications and vaccinations and, you know, all kinds of, of things that a lot of times people will without even knowing what's wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, which, which um, when they passed that veterinary feed directive a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. not to get totally off topic, but basically it meant you needed to have a vet prescription for a lot of the over the counter things. And I personally was in favor of it because I would hear from so many people saying, you know, one of my chickens didn't look quite right. So I went and I got antibiotics and I dosed mm-hmm. everybody and I've been doing that for a week now. And that is not the correct way to care for animals, you know, no. because that's the whole, you know, insulin resistance and antibiotic resistance, yep. whatever. Um, so you really need to know what you're dealing with. And I work really hard on preventive because I learned early on, it's hard to find vets. So if you can keep your animals healthy, you don't have to worry about what's wrong with them. And chickens especially are really hard because they hide their symptoms because they're, you know, kind of like the ultimate prey animal. And even within a flock, if the flock realizes that someone isn't feeling well, you know, mm-hmm. they'll kill them. I mean, worst yes. case, but whatever, you know, so it's true. Um, it is true. I mean, they yeah, are, so, they are wild animals in, yep. they are and, and flock or herd animals are very much. Um, I've read the same thing about like wolf packs, you know, if a, an older wolf is, you know, falling behind or it, it kind of uh, endangers the whole herd or the whole pack, you know? So yeah, chickens are super good at hiding their symptoms. And honestly, by the time you notice something wrong, there's probably six things wrong and it's, it's too mm-hmm. late. So I worked really hard on, you know, preventives and giving them lots of herbs and natural supplements. And, and it was fun. And it was, you know, it, it makes your coop pretty when you're hanging lavender and chamomile and mint. And, mm-hmm. you know, if nothing else, it's easy and expensive and fun. And a lot of it hasn't been studied. A lot of it hasn't been proven over the years. I've gotten a ton of flack from people, but you know what, in 14 years, we've never had a sick chicken or duck, like ever. I mean, they've nothing. They just don't get sick and they live to be nine years old. I have a bunch of eight-year-old chickens. We have had ducks live to be 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Like I know it works, you know, and I stand behind it and I'm not really out to convert everyone to my way of thinking, but I just want to put good information out there. So it's out there for people if they're interested. Now I saw last year, was it last year when you lost your Drake? That was, was that, yeah. him that he was so absolutely gorgeous. And um, for him to have been 12 years old with no illness and to have lived such a wonderful life, that is truly a testament to the prevention aspect of it. But some of that comes with education and it comes with knowing beforehand, which is where your books really come in handy because when instead of being reactive, we can be proactive about these things, just as you would for your own children or your garden. For yourself, exactly. Yes. And it's so much less stress-free. I mean, I get email almost on a daily basis from people, as I'm sure you do too. Mm -hmm. You know, my chicken is this, my chicken is that. She doesn't look this. She's, you know, her eyes or whatever. And then I have to try to figure out like what to tell them, which obviously the answer is go find a vet, which doesn't always (laughs) work. But it's just yeah. so much easier to keep them healthy, you know, and I, I really do believe in like the power of 
of all these different herbs and our chickens have their own herb garden. I planted them a raised bed right next to the coop. So when they go out to free range, they can hop into the garden and eat what they want, dust bathe in it, you know, and I, I feel like if you give them the tools, they know what to do with it. Most animals know like a dog will eat grass when it needs to, you know, throw something up. So I think if you give your chickens mm-hmm. the tools, they know how to use them. And that's really all you need to do. And it, I mean, I, I think it's fun and it makes sense. Um, I agree. And ducks too, you know, the, I mean, our ducks live with our chickens, so it's the same deal. But on the whole, ducks are just so much hardier. They don't tend to get the things that chickens can get, like coccidiosis or, mm-hmm. um, you know, Newcastle, like some of these diseases, even avian flu. Ducks can be carriers, but they rarely are affected by it. So, mm-hmm. I mean, ducks are going to take over the world one day, which is why I like to <laughs> say we're on board. <laughs> we're ready, right? Now, that, that is a question that a lot of people have because you're right people do a lot of times start out with chickens and then they maybe get misinformation or they're misled to think that ducks can't share the space so I know I've seen your coop on all of in your books and on uh, social media but can you tell me about what those benefits are of having the shared coop or are there any risks to it Yeah, I hear that a lot. You know, it's funny because I'll post a video of, you know, or a reel of my chickens and ducks clearly living together. They're living together. They're eating together, whatever. And someone will invariably say, can chickens and ducks live together? You know, Um, or I've heard that they they can't, you know. Um, Well, I mean, first of all, I keep a closed flock. So I'm not bringing in adult birds. It's only baby chicks or I hatch my own. So my risk of, you know, disease or, or anything is pretty low. Um, we have, like I said, had the chickens and ducks living, they've shared a run for 14 years and no one has ever gotten sick. Um, they did share a coop at the beginning and then they grew out of that little coop, you know, our starter coop, like happens to everybody. So I built a new coop and the ducks decided they wanted to stay in the old coop. So the chickens moved into the new coop and the ducks kept living in the original coop. So they were separated for a while, sharing a run. Now they're all back together in our coop here in Maine for body heat. I really wanted everyone Mm. together. Um, I think what people don't realize about ducks is that they sleep on the floor. They lay their eggs on the floor. So if you have a coop that's the right size for your chickens, you can theoretically add ducks without adding space. Right. Because the ducks are not roosting. They're not using nesting boxes. So it almost becomes like a double decker coop Mm -hmm. situation. Um, The biggest complaint about ducks that I hear is that they're so messy and they're disgusting and this and that. (laughs) Ducks are some of the cleanest creatures. Even our pecans were white all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, ducks are super clean. They make huge water messes. So I think the mistake people make is putting feed and water in the coop which I don't do anyway, even for the chickens, yep. uh, it's just a bad idea. Moisture flies, rodents, it's right. just a terrible idea. Um, so they eat, even here in Maine, our chickens and ducks eat outside every mm-hmm. day, year round. Um, they'll come out, they'll eat on cold days, they'll go back inside, but that moves all the mess outside. You don't have the ducks making a water mess in the coop. I put the bowls up on pallets, wooden pallets, which cuts down on the mud. Um, you cannot use gravity feeders and waterers with ducks. I learned Mm -hmm. that early on because, you know, the hanging, you know, gravity waterer, the ducks realized in about four seconds that they could empty it. So they would just play in it and (laughs) empty it and then create a mud puddle. So it was like a duck mud puddle maker. So I just use big tubs, you know, um, any Mm -hmm. kind of basin or tub, or I use a roasting pan, which is actually pretty funny. Um, You know, and the chickens have no problem with that. Chickens will drink out of you know, mud puddles, they'll drink runoff mm-hmm. from air conditioner. They'll yeah. drink out of the duck's dirty pool, kitty yes, pool, they will. even when there's <laughs> clean water. So people freak about crystal clear water. Like if you have ducks, the water will be muddy before you even end up filling it. And that's not really a problem. Duck, chickens scratch in the dirt all day long. Mm-hmm. So anything that's in that water bowl is nothing that they aren't going to come in contact with. And most of it, honestly, is feed. Ducks go back and forth feed to water, feed to water. They can choke, you know, if they don't have the water to wash down their food. So a lot of what ends up in their water dish is just feed. Feed. And at the end of the day, I'll pour the water off and the chickens will happily eat that that wet, you know, moistened feed. So I think it's just a question of learning how to manage their water mess. Um, And ducks just get such a bad rap for being, you know, dirty. Plus they're super cold hardy. So like mine will sleep outside until it gets down to about like 18 degrees I mean they're in a run you know predator proof totally Mm -hmm. safe at night but they do not want to sleep in the coop they would rather sleep outside and that way 
like all that poop and all that mess is outside too. Oh. So when you're, you know, setting up for ducks, it's a really good idea. I used to actually have a run inside our run because I was like super paranoid about predators. So inside mm -hmm. our big run, I had a little run that I would put the ducks in at night. So I felt like they were super, super safe, but they still, got, I mean, they'll sleep out in the snow, the sleet, mm -hmm. the rain. Um, they have a little dog house now that is their pool cabana in my run. Um, <laughs> so, you know, if it's snowing or whatever, they can go sleep in there. Um, there's straw in there, but yeah, ducks are, are different creatures than chickens. Absolutely. I, you know, the, the weather and the the water, I think, is maybe something that is a deterrent for people when they're considering ducks. Because I live in Michigan. I know that you live in Maine, and it's it's cold here. And uh, as a chicken keeper, you have to think about all of these things with keeping your chickens, you know, in a controlled environment almost where they're not access to drafts. They can't, um, they can't have the water in their coop because the moisture might cause frost. And you see these ducks. I know my first winter with ducks, I put on fishing waders and, and broke through ice to get to the middle of the pond to rescue, which they were looking at me like, get out. We are mm -hmm. happy as can be, but here I am going, get out babies, come back because it felt natural to me with chickens but they were content they were clean they were they had everything they needed without me and i think mm -hmm. that sometimes we need to give the control back over to the animals and your book allows us to do that it gives you the power to recognize their natural instincts their natural abilities and sometimes those do come with challenges, but most of those challenges we put on ourselves, like me yeah. going out to the middle of the pond, providing them things that are unnecessary. So maybe yeah, people the, make it harder on themselves for yes, sure, you yes. know, or in what, one benefit of ducks I found because, you know, water does freeze in the winter, but the ducks play in the water so much that even here in Maine, our water very rarely freezes over mm -hmm. completely because the ducks are playing in it. Or someone will say, you know, how cold is it? for ducks to like take a bath. I mean, I'll have ducks hop mm -hmm. into their water bowl. Yes. You know, when it's in the teens, yep. they know best. I'm not going to, you know, take away their water because I'm afraid that someone's going to, you know, want to take a swim. They're, they're mm -hmm. incredibly cold hardy. And I've re read a ton of articles about like the intricate, like blood vessels and veins in their feet and how it like cools and warms their blood, you know, cause wild ducks float around on half frozen ponds all winter. Yep. And their feet do not get frostbitten. So mm -hmm. there's a reason for that. And it's it's all sciencey. But um, yeah, it, it, I'm just really big about, you know, letting them be animals. I mean, I am not above putting my chickens in tutus nope. or, um, <laughs> you know, making them fun treats. A little scarf. To their poop, yeah. A scarf, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you got to let them be animals. You know, they're mm -hmm. bottom line. They are livestock and they're very well adapted to living outside, you know, and fending for themselves for, for you know, obviously predators are a huge concern, but as far as everything else, you know, I'm not out there dumping out and refilling their water 14 times a day because it's not, you know, clean by our standards, you know, right. and the chickens, the chickens make do. They and do. They're fine. And they're happy. I, I, I don't even think they just make do. Um, having that combined flock for me, I found that some of my chickens enjoyed spending time with some of my ducks. Um, they would lay with them. And a lot of times it was almost like the ducks were guiding them to new things that maybe they hadn't even explored. Because when the ducks would waddle off to the pond, sometimes the chickens would follow too. And they'd watch the ducks almost like fishing down in the mud, you know, catching a frog. <laughs> and the chickens come up and they're like, holy cow, look at this. There's a free meal up here. We're missing out. Uh, That's so true. They, ducks, yeah, ducks are a lot more adventurous. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also travel together. You know, when I let everyone out to free range, the chickens kind of scatter. They might have like mm -hmm. one bestie that they hang out with. The ducks are always together. They march around like they're on this grand mission. And they are a lot more adventurous and they like to explore things and you're right the chickens you know might might learn new cool places to <laughs> find bugs or whatever yes yes now do you have a favorite breed of duck it's kind of like cheese I've really never met a type I don't like oh <laughs> that's awesome now I, mean, I, I find them all similar like because all ducks descended from the mallard mm -hmm. you know other than Muscovies that aren't really sure. technically ducks anyway but um 
because all ducks, you know, descended from the same common ancestor, I find their temperaments a lot more similar breed to breed, whereas chickens, each breed definitely has a different personality. But but ducks, I think, are more similar. The smaller breeds are, you know, a little bit more active or, you know, like the runners and the magpies and inconas and all that. And the bigger breeds tend to be a little bit more sedate. But I think for the most part, you know, they're all pretty similar. Well, that's good to know. You know, I've had the Muscovies here too. And you're right. They are completely different. Um, but even like the large breed ducks, they don't act any different than, you know, your runners other than maybe their noises. They're still the a little same. slower. <laughs> yeah. Well, a little bit. <laughs> that was always funny at feed time, you know, or when you'd add like peas to their pool and watch the, the pecans try to get there. <laughs> and they're just like, please leave some for me. I'm coming. Um, but one thing that I really love about your books and your show is that you can help people of all experience levels without, without really busting the bank too, because we're doing this naturally. We're not, we're not doing things that are unnecessary up front. So one of my favorite parts of this book is all of the common weeds that your flock mm -hmm. can eat that they'll find. And you said, you mentioned that you have a chicken garden. Do the ducks eat from that as well? Not so much. I mean, ducks will eat pretty much anything green, okay. you know, so they don't tend to hop up into the garden uh, as much as the chickens do. Of course, they don't take dust baths in it, oh, right. but the ducks definitely love their, their dandelions and chickweed and, you know, all kinds of weeds. Mm -hmm. Do you grow any herbs specifically for the ducks or is it kind of common between the ducks and chickens? Yeah, common. And a lot of times if I do have to prune or whatever, you know, I'll just take a handful and throw them in the water for the ducks. You know, it's funny because I was talking about geese earlier. And when we got the geese, I was like, oh, they're just like big ducks. So I throw all kinds of things in the ducks water. I mean, that is like the ducks live for that, you know, green mm -hmm. things floating in yep. their water tub. So I started doing it for the geese and the geese were like, what the heck is in our water? I mean, they refuse <laughs> to drink water if there's anything floating in it. Wow. They, definitely are not into that they do not enjoy that they'll eat you know cabbage and broccoli and lettuce and mm -hmm. you know kind of all the green things that the ducks like but they do not want it thrown in their water I learned that early on which was very interesting yeah I would have never thought you'd think a water file a foul animal would look in there and see it as a fishing opportunity but they, yeah, were, they were like oh, it no. oh no like this is in my bathtub no thank you yeah <laughs> But they will throw things. They'll they'll throw pine cones or even small rocks, uh, twigs. They like to throw things into their water, but they don't like green things floating in their water for some odd reason. <clears throat> yeah. That's very interesting. Now, if you had one piece of advice for somebody who is starting out with ducklings this year, what would it be? Oh, so many pieces of advice. <laughs> I oh think definitely don't listen to all the naysayers and just figure out how to manage their environment, you know, like we were talking about, because ducks can make a big water mess. So it, it's just managing their water mess, even as ducklings in a brooder. You know, I usually brood them in our spare bathtub just because there's so much water everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. in that way, all the water that they spill could just, you know, I put like rubber shelf liner in the bottom so they don't slip and just let all the water go down the drain because, you know, they'll be two days old and they'll all trying to be sitting in their water dish. Yep. They, they yes. just live to be in water and to be wet yes. and, and don't brood them with chicks. I learned that oh, lesson gosh. as well. Maybe that should be the biggest piece of advice is that they do need to be separate because a wet chick is not a happy chick, but a wet duckling that's the best day of their life so far. Um, that's a great piece of advice. I know my first duck brooder, I did in one of those pop-up play tents for puppies mm -hmm. and it lasted, I don't know, two days before I went, no, I can't do this anymore because of the splashing and the fun and exploring or learning how to eat. Cause you are right. They go back and forth between their feed and their water, their feed and their water. And um, it does make a mess. So that that's a great tip. Now, mm -hmm. ducks uh, grow faster too, ducklings, and they need less heat, you know, so you're reducing the chicks five degrees a week, starting yeah. at 95, the ducklings, I start at 90 and reduce it seven degrees a week, which doesn't seem like a big difference. But if you do that math out six weeks, you're in completely different places for chicks and ducklings. You're right. You're absolutely right. Now, do you find that brooding ducklings, if you look aside from the mess, is it easier to brood ducklings than chickens? I think so, just because they harden off 
more quickly and they can get outside more quickly. Mm -hmm. um, do you yeah. know at your farm have have your ducks raised their own young last year, right? They did. That was our surprise babies. The eggs uh -huh. were not collected. And <laughs> um, they started with 16, I think. Uh-huh. And then slowly, you know, I started candling them to see which ones, you know, might be fertile, might be developing. And then a couple disappeared just because, you know, sometimes eggs just disappear. And we ended up with three that were they were in Kona because our, our Drake is in it was in Kona. So they were in Kona runner crosses. Those were Kona adorable. blue runner crosses. Yeah, yeah. They're super cute. They're spotted mm -hmm. like with gray spots and our, our, so our two uh, runners co-parented, even though one of them actually was the technical parent, you know, with the three eggs that hatched and the two moms, I didn't know, you know, how it would work because they, mm -hmm. you know, were kind of like brooder mates and friends and whatever, but you never know with like maternal instincts. And I watched them really carefully and they just loved sharing those three babies. Mm -hmm. And they were like a little family. I kept them separate, you know, from the Drake and the other, you know, bigger ones. They were like in our starter coop for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. but the two moms just had a blast. And after I put everyone in for the evening, I would let the moms and the three babies out in the yard a little bit and kind of walk around with them just so they could explore they were the best moms. And I didn't know, you know, runners are a little, they're a little crazy. They <laughs> so are. Sure. Yeah, you're right. You know, that they, I was shocked that they sat for the entire three weeks. I never would have expected because they're on the go. I mean, always, you know, but they would, they would tag team and one would go and then come back and the other would go. So it worked out really well. But if they have a safe space for nesting and they feel comfortable there, there's no reason that they can't. And so, mm -hmm. um, I don't want people to think that you can't have really have a sustainable flock with, with, ducklings because you can uh, they will raise their own young depending on your breed and you can be just as sustainable with ducks and I know you talked about most of the books that you had read previously were about using ducks for meat but if you're having them for um, pets and for eggs I've got to ask which do you prefer the chicken egg or the <laughs> duck egg um yeah we prefer the duck egg <laughs> now is that for yeah, taste um yeah they're bigger the yolks are larger they're higher in fat I bake a lot um especially you know writing my cookbook I was baking all the time and I mm -hmm. like using the duck egg for baking um once you start eating the duck eggs they just have so much more flavor the chicken eggs just kind of seem really plain you know so I started using our chicken eggs just like for breading or mm -hmm. if I was making an egg wash or things like that that's awesome. I, I did pick up a copy of uh, Fresh Eggs Daily Cookbook, and I don't really have any laying ducks, and I just can't wait to try some of these recipes because the duck egg does bring that higher fat content for baking, and I've had recipes made with duck eggs, and they're just so much more delectable. They're rich. They feel full, and that's a nice feeling to have. Well, yeah, Lisa, they're lighter. I Yes. Light. Well, yeah, that too. You know, with chicken eggs, we we always hear about chicken eggs, the beautiful chicken egg basket. But duck eggs can come in a variety of colors and sizes in just the same way. So having a duckling flock or a flock of ducks as opposed to chickens is is maybe even more beneficial for somebody who's using them in their cooking. And mm -hmm. you get the benefit of seeing these beautiful birds flashing out um, outside and having fun. So, I agree. Yeah. Well, Lisa, I can't thank you enough for joining me today and giving our listeners a peek into what a naturally raised flock of ducks looks like. Your knowledge is invaluable, and I can't wait to see your new season of Welcome to My Farm. Oh, thank you so much. And with that, we thank you for listening to The Coop. Be sure to subscribe, and if you'd be so kind, drop us a review. Have a poultry-related question or topic you'd like us to cover? We want to hear from you. Send us an email at podcast at meyerhatchery.com. Thank you.